What's up guys, my name is Jake, and welcome to Abandoned, episode 48. This is the show where we talk about some of the most interesting abandoned places in the world. This episode is sponsored by Audible. Start listening today with a 30-day Audible trial, and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals are free. Visit audible.com bsf or text bsf to 500-500. During our recent northeast road trip, we noticed an interesting location on maps as we entered Nazareth, Pennsylvania. It was the ruins of what looked like a former NASCAR track. In fact, this massive property used to be the once legendary Nazareth Speedway. So today, let's explore the history of the track and how it got to this unbelievable state. The roots of the Nazareth Speedway can be traced all the way back to the mid-1800s as a popular horse racing track in the middle of town. But as crowds became too large, it was decided to move and construct a new half-mile dirt track and facility at a new location just outside of town. Over the next few decades, the track hosted various events, including the popular, yet short-lived, Auto Polo, which was essentially just regular polo, just with small vehicles. Soon though, the small carts were dropped, and at the increasingly popular dirt track, racing became the new hot event. The first official race was held in the late 1940s, with 35 cars and as many as 11,000 spectators present. Events like this carried on through the next couple of years, providing fast-paced, short track races, endurance events, and many more. This was all well and good until the early 1960s, when the original half-mile track was sold and a new 1.2-mile large dirt track was constructed. It opened just off the main thoroughfares of Easton Road and Nazareth Pike in April of 1966, with the name Nazareth National Speedway. The track hosted many modified car events, where Frankie Schneider took home first place various times. By now, the track was hosting more and more events every year, as racing became even more popular. A small racing organization called NASCAR began to grow in America, and small tracks began hosting their events. Though the Nazareth National Speedway was still very much a small track in terms of popularity and support facilities. It was still just a larger dirt circuit where other small town tracks like the North Wilkesboro Speedway had already been paven and was in the sight lines of NASCAR. Nazareth, on the other hand, well, they didn't have much money to keep up with the trends, and the track closed in 1971. The track was left abandoned for over a decade until an entrepreneur named Lindy V. Vicari stepped in and purchased the track. He wanted to open up the speedway once again and host high-paying events while also shortening down the length of the speedway to just one mile. These races proved to be successful, drawing in large crowds and a new dedicated fan base for the small facility. By 1986, the property changed ownership once again, and a year later, a new track and facility was finally built consisting of a paved 1 1 8 mile track. It opened in the fall as the newly named Pennsylvania International Raceway. The place is a brand new racing facility, Pennsylvania International Raceway, and the event the 13th round of the IndyCar season, the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix. It's really a wonderful, wonderful racetrack. It has all the high technology anyone can want, but unfortunately, we've had a lot of rain here. Large events like the Firestone Indy 225 had already been racing on the site, and now had finally attracted the ever-valuable NASCAR. In 1988, the NASCAR Busch Series began the Pennsylvania 300, a massive mainstream race consisting of some of the best drivers on a 200 lap race around the new speedway. It was a big win for the small, homegrown track and brought Nazareth into the limelight. Through the next few years, the NASCAR Busch Series, along with the IndyCar races, held many successful events at the track, with notable winners like James Hensley, Elliot Sadler, Matt Kenseth, Martin Truex Jr., and many more. By the early 90s, the track had continued in popularity, with it being a smaller, low-banking track with dips in elevation. It made for a fun watch and a fan-favorite track, and in 1993, it was renamed back 
to the Nazareth Speedway. NASCAR also brought another event in 1996 with the Chevy Silverado 200, yet another massive seasonal event to be held at the Speedway. Just a year later, the entire facility received a major refurbishment, and the track from the early 1900s now looked a lot different in the modern day era of racing. Tens of thousands of fans flocked to the Speedway, one that still felt like an original venue, one that had character and just an overall different feel. It was close to Pennsylvania race fans, and both NASCAR fans and drivers loved going to that specific track during the season. Remember too that facilities like the Texas Motor Speedway had just opened a few years prior, and it was a clear idea of how NASCAR was moving. I mean, this new track was nothing short of a massive facility, capable of holding over 180,000 people. It even had a condo building on the property which overlooked the track. Legitimate condos which people could buy. Anyways, the point is, Nazareth still felt like the old NASCAR that fans loved. Not the new mega facilities which was quickly taking over the older venues. However, that also meant Nazareth wouldn't last much longer. North Wilkesboro, a legendary NASCAR homegrown track, had already been replaced. NASCAR had left Wilkesboro in the mid-90s, and Nazareth Speedway, with its minimal capacity and relatively poor location, it was only a matter of time before Nazareth met the same fate. The Chevy Silverado event ended in 2001, and by 2004, the end had finally come. NASCAR and the Indy Racing League had announced that both the remaining Bush Series and the Firestone Indy would conclude their races at Nazareth at the end of the 2004 season. The NASCAR Bush Series would move its following year's dates to Watkins Glen, and the Firestone Indy would move to Nashville. With the removal of two huge races, the now eventless Speedway was essentially left to die. The owners, ISC, had decided to just close the track as NASCAR had outgrown the small speedway. Nazareth was now without any major events, and the track was permanently closed and subsequently left abandoned. By 2007, much of the facility was gutted and removed, including the grandstands, all while weeds and decay took their toll on what remained. Signage bordering the property was removed, and a chain-link fence was put up to keep people out. But also, large piles of sand were dropped on the track itself to prevent people from bringing their own cars around the track. A letter of purchase had been submitted in 2005, where a local entrepreneur had wanted to turn the Speedway into a new sports arena, valued at around $30 million. However, that plan just never came to fruition. A year later, a realty group had signed an agreement of $19 million to buy the property and use the land for housing and commercial real estate. However, that company too had also defaulted on their purchase. The owners had then put the track up for sale at around $18 million in 2007, then lowering that price later on after the recession. But still, no buyers followed through, all while trees and foliage began to overtake the property. And this is really how the Speedway remained since, now just a shell of its former days. Though, in 2015, Raceway Properties LLC had followed through with their purchase and acquired Nazareth Speedway for an undisclosed amount, with the actual intent to use the land. However, despite the name of the LLC, well, it's not really what it seems. See, in the purchase deal itself, there's a clause in the contract stating that the former Speedway could not be used as a track for racing events due to its close proximity to the Pocono Speedway, for some reason. David Jandel, the owner of Raceway, had stated that some of the land will likely be used for agricultural purposes, though it's likely that it will be for some sort of real estate. Nothing to do with the original Nazareth Speedway track. And that's really it. The last the plan was talked about was in 2017, and nothing really concrete in terms of redevelopment has surfaced since. The Speedway today still stands completely abandoned, now a hotspot for arson and an undisturbed look at what a NASCAR track looks like rotting away. From the air, you can still make out where the grandstands once stood, the former track itself, now with weeds growing through it, and even the checkered winter square. For however long it lasts in the future, the former Nazareth Speedway stands today as a relic of NASCAR and racing history. It began well over a hundred years ago, and was built and served for fans throughout the many decades it operated.
NASCAR brought it to huge popularity, and the people who remember watching it or even experiencing the small town, homegrown track, I'm sure would all agree that it was an iconic part of racing history. One that will certainly never be forgotten. If you're the type of person who wants to learn more about one of America's largest sports, Speed Show, how NASCAR won the heart of America, is a fascinating dive into how the racing organization captivated the country in its early rise. But if you're like me and don't have a lot of time or patience to sit down and read it, a great alternative is to listen with Audible, the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet. Including, of course, this one. Audible has a ton of original shows, news comedy, health and fitness, and so much more. You can listen on almost any device, anytime, anywhere, and find great audiobooks to help enrich your life, like my favorite type, learning about new things. Audible members get three credits every month, one audiobook and two Audible originals. Try it free for 30 days by visiting audible.com slash bsf or texting bsf to 500, 500 A link will also be in the description below. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, and thank you very much for watching.